Welcome to the unboxing and building of the original Prusa i3 Mark II. I've been waiting for this printer for about six weeks and it finally arrived so I couldn't wait to get the package open. Once you open the package, inside you will find the following. Lots of protection. You get a checklist ensuring that you have all the parts needed to complete the build. Testing protocol ensuring that all the parts you get worked by the time they ship them. There is of course the iconic Prusa Haribo candy. As well as a printing handbook and an assembly instructions. The mandatory Haribo candy from Prusa and that is super nice to kind of become a trademark for the company. You also find two small boxes containing parts. Inside these boxes are 3D printed parts. You also have a box containing all the rest of the parts, including bolts, nuts, belts, and electronic parts. There's also a power supply included, and this ensures that you do not have to do any kind of soldering. There also has two modes on the power supply, one for 110 volts and one for 240 volts. There is also included a one kilo roll of filament. In my case, it's a silver PLA, uh, kind of metal looking. That's the one I chose from the website. This large square box includes the frame, also the carriage for the bed and the heated bed itself. You also get a motor kit box, including all the stepper motors, some of them come with the rods, but they are all labeled to show you if they are the X, Y, Z axis. A cylindrical container including all the bars and screws you need to build the frame itself. Now let's get all this stuff out of the way so I can show you how it all looks when we open up the boxes. Now I wanted to film the whole unboxing, and I did. Um, then I wanted to continue and film the whole building process. However, I did not realize that my camera would die halfway through. Um, but I was so excited to get building. I started at 11 o'clock in the evening, and it was so much fun. Here are all the parts spread out on the table. All the parts also include a tool bag, so you have all the tools needed. However, it is nice to have a piece of, or have some calibers by your side, as well as a screwdriver containing the bits you need to, uh, to assemble, because the small torque kit included in the box is quite insufficient at some points. The assembly manual is uh, fairly detailed, and it includes pictures of all the parts and where they need to go. However, the pictures are kind of small, so it is a good idea to go into the Prusa website and see the larger pictures in there and use them as a reference. Also in there, the community can come with comments about what problems they have doing that part of the build, so you might get some tips and ideas for uh, your exact build right there. The frame goes on to the assembly and you use it to square up the frame for it. Um, so you basically put it on and take it off again. The manual is pretty good at explaining what steps are important to keep the measurements exact and what steps you can kind of ignore them because they will come in later. Here I am assembling the hot end and the hot end is a really nice one. Like you get the original E3D V6 in this one and uh, the hot end can handle ABS and all kinds of filaments. So that's really nice. As well as the heated bed is also a really good quality and uh, can reach high temperatures to print ABS. This is my first 3D printer so I do not have a lot of experience. Um, but I did a lot of research before deciding that this was the right fit for me and I'm happy I did. Now, once you're done, you can do a self-test and make sure that the machine is within the dimensions of printing. And this will ensure that you do not destroy the machine. Um, 
And once that's done, you can do an XYC calibration. Now the first time I did this, it actually failed because it said it wasn't able to reach the front centers. And I was fairly sure that I had connected all the things correctly and the distances were correct. However, upon inspection, I realized that it had shifted about a millimeter or so and that was enough to make it unable to reach the front sensors. So the first time I made a print on this printer, it actually... It was... I was done with the printer in the morning. I was so excited to get going. So I found the body on the SD card. That's a kind of print that's already on there. And I pushed print and it just failed miserably. The reason why was because I've been touching the bed so much that I had my greasy fingerprints all over it. Here I am just printing a quick whistle just to see how it works with a time lapse. And one of the things on this printer that makes time lapses kind of ugly is that the bed itself is moving, meaning the object you're looking at is moving all the time. And this makes it very blurry. So I will make a mount for the bed so that I can print time lapses or show printing time lapses. But this will require me to print the camera holder in ABS since the bed would otherwise melt the PLA. At least enough to the point where it will get soft. So, you, in the box you also get an SD card and this SD card is a Samsung SD card with 8 gigabytes of space on it. On this card you'll find a couple of test prints. Um, one of the first Actually, the first successful print I did was this dinosaur head, and it came out absolutely perfect. It came out with supports that you could easily remove, and once they were removed, it just looked amazing. I mean, I was it was a surprise for me what kind of quality this printer actually will produce compared to the price point, and also there was a machine I made myself. Now, once that was complete, I went into Thingiverse and during the six weeks of waiting I had saved a lot of models amongst other a Shiba uh, model that is the same as my dog so I tried to print this one and this time I used the recommended slicer for uh, for this printer and that would be the that would be the Prusa 3D slicer mark 2 now it worked, but it didn't have enough supports on it, and I didn't know how to add extra supports. So I quickly went into YouTube and looked it up, and I saw a lot of people were talking about using Simplify 3D. So I looked up Simplify 3D, and it is a pricey software. However, they did have a two-week trial, so I went ahead and downloaded that and tried it out and oh my god, this changed absolutely everything. It made it so easy to add extra supports, also to tell the software to print the support at a 0.3 offset from the model, meaning removing objects from these supports were easy peasy. Plus, they did not leave any kind of marks on the model. It is so nice to be able to go into a website like Thingiverse and just look up a model, push download, throw it into the slicer, put it over to the printer, and the printer will make you this object. It is a weird, weird, but wonderful thing to be able to do. And um, I printed out this bender figure, and then I wanted to see how nice I could polish it up by using sandpaper and painting it. And it actually came out quite nice. I highly, highly recommend this printer. If you want me to do a full-on review of it, I might do that in a later video. But so far, my next video will probably be about fixing up this Crash Bandicoot model and making it appear as a custom collectible. So if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. If there's something I can improve, just tell me in the comments and I'll try to do it till next time. Um, it is my first unboxing video. Um, I hope you liked it. It wasn't too long and the music, I know it's super annoying, but I mean, it covers up some of my voice, so I guess you should be happy about that. I basically think that is it.